Hi guys, and welcome to another video. So, I was literally just about to leave the house, and then my phone started vibrating relentlessly with notifications that, of course, Sunderland have made yet another signing. It's definitely a, a disturbance that I absolutely welcome. So, Sunderland have made the signing, a loan signing, of Everton striker Nathan Broadhead. Now, again, it's one of those signings that I can't sit here and tell you that I know a load about him. I do actually recognise him a little bit more than uh, the, the last couple in terms of Doyle originally I knew nothing about. Alves, I didn't really know anything about either. I knew obviously Sirkin, but um, but with this one, I did actually recognise his name somewhat from his stint a couple of years ago back at Burton. He uh, had a bit of a loan spell there, where I believe he was mainly used as a left winger, hence his uh, his goal return of two goals in 19. But I believe he did quite well there. Um, but he's been a regular for the under 23s for Everton, so and I think that's where he's been playing most of his time uh, as a striker. Now, of course, last night it was actually sort of hinted or, or almost announced by uh, an Everton podcast or fanzine, one of the two, um, a, a really well-known one uh, for Everton, where they did announce that Sunderland, it, it's looking as if we've sealed the deal to get Broadhead on loan. So the, the deal was, was almost sort of spoilt for us there a little bit last night, was we were just expecting it to happen today at some point, and it has, of course, happened. So well, I, they did have a... Um, a conversation, Roker Report, and this Everton podcast, or fanzine, whatever it is, again, sorry, I forget the name as well, it eludes me, uh, just to discuss Broadhead and get a little bit of uh, insight behind him as well, because if you think, he's 23 years of age and he's someone who's playing in the under-23s, on paper that doesn't sound great, you know, as a 23-year-old, a 23-year-old footballer, you'd expect to be, you know, you know, almost sort of... Sort of you know, already treading water and making your own path in your career already, rather than still being in a youth team. That really shouldn't be the case in the under-23s, you know. That's really the sort of absolute maximum latest you should be, of course, with it being called an under-23 side, you know what I mean? But but still, you, you know what I mean? So when the uh, the Roker Report, or when the Roker Report did speak to this uh, to this podcast, they, they did say, you know, that they actually rate him quite highly. They've always liked the look of him. And if anything... They did say that you know the Everton youth system it probably hasn't been managed brilliantly in recent times in terms of keeping hold of youth players for too long and not really using them in the first team and only using them within the youth squads, not sending them out on loan and, and getting that bit of game time that certain players need to have been guilty of maybe keeping hold of players for too long and Broadhead is absolutely an example of that. But apparently he's been firing for the under twenty threes, he's looked brilliant there. He's a quick, tricky, strong player, you know, that's getting behind, lots of run at players, he likes to, you know, show off his flair and go for goal. And you know he has an half a goal, which is sounds absolutely brilliant. So he has the versatility of being able to play in either wing and, and as a striker. So I don't know whether this is going to be Lee Johnson classing Broadhead as the, the backup to Stewart or is it a backup to, to the wingers. But of According to this Everton podcast, it is um, it's his goal, Broadhead, to really set his name out as a striker. So I don't blame that, and that is a uh, and if that is what he wants to do, and of course that would mean that he is going to be number two to Ross Stewart. Now, what does that mean for the rest of the strikers? Of course, you've got Will Grigg, who we're trying to desperately get out of the door. He obviously doesn't want to be here. He doesn't seem to have the attitude, and he hasn't really wanted to be here since the second he set foot in in the northeast. So. There you have it. Don't know what's going to happen there. Does that mean that the the Jebson deal is, is completely done and you know blown out of the water now? Which you know it, it wouldn't necessarily be disappointing. I did like the the thought of it, but you know I, we're still doing the same transfer business that I wanted to do anyway. You know we need to get this youth in this flair, this this pacing, this bit of energy around the squad rather than going for these you know sort of you know, League One journeymen, which I'm not saying that other clubs are necessarily doing, but that's something that we've done in the past. We've just gone for players that have a little bit of League One experience rather than going for players that are, you know, young and hungry and desperate to make a name for themselves, particularly the likes of Broadhead, because as I say, as a 23-year-old, having to stick around the youth team for so long, it mustn't be the greatest sort of motivation knowing that, you know, you're training all week and you know that you're just going to be the main striker in an under-23 side. Granted, it's a high-caliber academy and what have you, but 23 years of age, you don't want to be in in the youth squad of any team. You want to be either on the bench or, or, or making the, the squad or starting 11 of, of any team, you know, at whatever level. You don't want to be in the youth squad. But either way, we'll have a look at the Sunderland statement. So Sunderland AFC is delighted to announce the loan signing of Nathan Broadhead. The 23-year-old striker moves to the stage of life from Everton on a season-long loan following Alex Pritchard, Callum Doyle, Corey Evans, Dennis Serkin and Frederick Alves to Wearside this summer. Broadhead made his first team debut for the Toffees in December 2017 in the Europa League tie against Apollon Limassol. I probably butchered that, I do apologise. With his Premier League debut coming last season away at Brighton and Hove Albion. The Wales Under-21 international has spent the 2019-20 season on loan 
in Sky Bet League One with Burton Albion, featuring 22 times and scoring three goals. I got that wrong earlier. I thought he only scored a couple. Last season, Broadhead netted 11 times and registered three assists for Everton's under-23 side in Premier League Two. Upon joining SAFC, Broadhead said, it's been a mad 48 hours from being on the bench for Everton to arriving in Sunderland, but I'm so happy to be here. I've had a good pre-season, training and playing for the first team and travelling with them to America, and I'm sure that will help me hit the ground running. It's been a long time since I've played in front of fans due to the pandemic, and Sunderland is a massive club, so I can't wait to get out there. Lee Johnson added, Whenever we bring in a player, we do so because we believe they will make us stronger, and that's absolutely the case with Nathan. It's a keep because he's had top-level offers in Europe and championship offers as well, at what is a key stage of his career. He has the experience, technique and speed, and he just needs that vehicle to put that together. We believe that Sunderland is the perfect opportunity as he will have the team, supply and service and a Premier League environment around him, so it is a really good match. So as Lee Johnson mentions there, of course, it, we are only bringing in plays that he does genuinely believe will improve the squad. It's not just simply squad plays or just bringing in numbers for the sake of it. As again, you could probably argue that some teams in the league have done that. You know, maybe they won't necessarily improve the current squad. It's literally just so they have bodies through the door. And that's something that, again, we've been massively, massively guilty of in the past. We just brought in plays because it was easier, you know, bringing in a free agent, pure, you know, for me, you know, free agents, they're not the worst thing in the world. You know, look at you know, PSG, they've brought Messi in on a free. They've got, uh, they've got Ramos in on a free. Uh, of course, there'd be a lot of money going along with agents' fees and what have you. But still, do you know what I mean? It's free agents, it doesn't really mean it's a bad player. But it, it's more simple to go for a free agent. I think we've gone for simplicity rather than actual uh, quality that we need in the past. Whereas now, we're waiting out, we're being patient, we're, we're being quiet, we're being professional. And we're bringing youth that are hungry and really, really ready to stake a claim um, within our squad and they want to be here as well which is great and like Lee Johnson said he's in a perfect age 23 years of age like I mentioned earlier and alluded to he really wants to make a name for himself and he could absolutely do it here at the stage of my life he's got a brilliant opportunity like I said we have Premier League um, facilities here so it's not like he's going to be completely out of his depth because Everton have great facilities there as well so it, it could be like a home from home for him hopefully he can hit the ground running because like I say he's had a decent pre-season with Everton you know, so there was a chance that at one point that he could have just been on a bench player for Everton, even in the Premier League, potentially anyway. But um, but it's come to us. He apparently, he's had offers from Blackpool and uh, a couple of teams in the Championship and elsewhere as well as um, Lee Johnson did mention. But I did see a report where I think he's, he's turned down Blackpool. Uh, it might have been Nottingham Forest, somewhere like that either. There's a couple of Championship clubs that he rejected to come here. So at the minute, you know, I said it on Twitter the other day, Lee Johnson, as much as you know, would take the piss, and I've taken the piss particularly, you know, with his, um, sometimes it, the stuff he comes out with, it's very sort of Ricky Gervais, uh, David Brent-esque. You know, you can take the mick a little bit, but he absolutely has a name uh, of himself within the game as someone who can get the best out of youngsters. And that's why the likes of Broadhead, you know, Callum Doyle, you know, Sirkin, players like this, uh, and Alves as well, uh, they could have easily gone to championship clubs. A lot of them they could have very easily gone to championship clubs, but they know that Lee Johnson might be able to mould them and improve them as players. And that's what we do have with Lee Johnson. I believe that that's where we do need to start giving a bit of credit because I don't think half these players would come in if it wasn't for Lee Johnson. But for me, I think it's a decent signing. It's a very, very decent signing. Um, it's I've, I've seen a bit of uh, uh, compilations and footage of Broadhead. You know, a couple of goals here and there. Uh, his Bert, there was one that scored for Burton when he coming off, off left hand side. He's bent it into the to the bottom right. It was a lovely finish. There's loads of different types of goals for the Everton under 23s, be it tap ins, long range, you know, skillful driving into the box with strength and just bundling his way in and beating the keeper. There's several goals uh, all over the shot. You can probably find him, find of him, sorry, on the internet. And it's definitely something we need. We need something to uh, you know push Ross Stewart because. Other than Ross Stewart, I don't really trust any other strikers at the club. I'm not sounds harsh, you know. O'Brien, uh, I, I don't think he'll be able to do a job, and he hasn't been able to do a job. Um, maybe in the cup competition, you give O'Brien some game time, but he definitely doesn't get on the team sheet for me. Broadhead can really push Stewart, you know. Even though Stewart's done brilliantly so far, and I'm a massive, massive fan of Ross Stewart, and right now I'd still have Stewart ahead of Broadhead, but um, you need that competition. It's healthy, you know. It, it could push him even further. You know, work together. They might even be able to link up at times. So it's really exciting. I'm very happy with this signing. So what do you think of the signing? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have enjoyed this video, I can go out now, finally. Um, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming.